I'm now going to wire this electric cooker into this cooker connection unit. You can see that the isolator is there. We're just going to check that that doesn't illuminate once we switch it on. We're just going to go and lock off the MCB at the consume unit for that, just to be safe. So it actually connects to that. The cooker actually already has the cable. If you don't have the cable, you will have to get some suitable cable for the cooker that you are connecting. But this is a relatively simple job. This cooker has actually been moved from another property, so we actually have the cable already, which is the correct cable for this cooker. So all you need to do is connect it into the cooker connection unit. You can see that the cooker circuit is identified. So we're just going to lock that off. We'll keep the key with us and that will prevent anybody from switching the circuit back on accidentally. A good tip before you try moving the cooker is to put down a scrap piece of lino or something on the floor so that the actual kitchen surface doesn't actually get damaged. So I've put it on this scrap piece and I can now safely move the cooker backwards and forwards without actually damaging the floor. So we're just going to remove these two screws. And you can see on the plate there that we've actually got a cut out already for the cable. Before we go touching any of the terminals in there we do need to check to ensure that they are not live and that we've isolated the correct circuit. So I've now got a GS38 approved voltage tester. First of all we're going to check that the test is working by pressing the self test button, which it is, and then we're going to check the leads are working by doing a continuity test. So I'm going to press the button and touch the probes together. So you can see that the leads are working, the machine is working. So we're now going to probe between earth and live, earth and neutral, and then neutral and live. And we're just going to ensure that there is absolutely nothing there at all, so that it is completely safe for us to work on. Now we're just going to check that the test is still working, so we'll test the probes again. That's still working, we'll do the auto test. So you can now be assured that that circuit is completely dead and it is safe to work on. So we're just going to undo the grip. And we've got a gap for the cable to go through. When you put this cable through, you need to get it the correct way around. You don't want to get the live and the neutral on the wrong side because it is difficult to manipulate these wires with them being so thick. So it always helps if you get them the correct way like so. We're then going to feed them up between the two pieces of insulation. Once we've got that up there far enough, we can then re-tighten the screws. That will grip the wire and ensure that it can't be pulled out. So I'm now going to proceed to undo the screws that are holding the wires in here. You do need a good fitting screwdriver to do this. because these connections do need to be very tight. I'm just going to remove that. Then we can push the wire directly into the slot. Then we can carefully replace the screw. It's important when you do this that you don't cross thread the screw. Once that's in, we can simply tighten that up. It is important that these connections are tight. The last thing you want is a loose connection. Loose connections can cause sparking and fires. And I'll do the earth. see from that that the earth wire is a bit long so I'm just going to cut a bit of the insulation off and then I'm just going to carefully bend 
the conductor back on itself. And we can push that back in there and then insert the screw. Again, you do need to be careful not to cross thread these screws. And then finally, we're going to undo the live wire and place that in position. In, we can then replace the screw. So it's critical that these are tight. The last thing you want is any sparking in there that could potentially cause a fire. You don't want to go all mad though when you're tightening them because they're only brass and you can quite easily strip the threads on them if you do go mad. So they need to be tight but not that tight that you actually strip them. And I'll just check that these are tight, which they are, and then we can replace the cover. We can now remove the lock. And the lock off device. And then we can switch the cooker circuit on. We can then carefully move the cooker back, ensuring that the wire doesn't get trapped behind when we push it back. We can then remove the scrap piece of line off. And then we can switch the cooker on and then we can check that it's working. So that's how to wire a cooker into a cooker connection unit. If there's anything at all that you're not sure about and you're not confident with electrics, it is a good idea to get a qualified electrician to do this job for you. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel.